Okay, so I think everyone's here now. So uh, the talk today uh, is called Building High Performance Erlang Clients uh, using a framework called Shackle. So uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Louis-Philippe Gauthier. Uh, I'm from uh, Montreal, Canada. I work for a company called uh, Adgear. Um, what we do is uh, we're building a real-time uh, bidding platform for online advertising. And uh, I've been kind of working on this project for the last uh, five years now. And uh, for this project, one of the first tasks I had to accomplish was to build a client to talk uh, to the Cassandra database. Uh, at first, I thought it would be easy. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, scaling a client in Erlang can be uh, quite complicated because uh, you hit some uh, bottlenecks pretty quickly. So um, the problem uh, I'm trying to solve with this framework is basically uh, for an application to speak to a service. Now, uh, what's a service? A service, in this case, is something where uh, you can communicate over TCP socket. And uh, the service is going to speak a protocol. It can be a ASCII or binary. And this protocol can be either uh, synchronous or asynchronous. Uh, examples of services are uh, Cassandra, Memcached, Kafka, HTTP2, uh, etc. Now, um, the goals for this framework uh, I had four goals. So the first one was speed. Uh, you want to do requests that happen quickly um, in the sense that uh, we want to minimize the time. Uh, the second characteristic that we wanted was concurrency. So uh, it's good to be able to do one request quickly, but it's even better if you can do 10,000 at the same time really quickly. The third characteristic uh, is safety. So in Erlang, we often say, uh, let it crash, which is kind of a, was presented, I'm guessing, from uh, the previous presentation, where you have a supervisor that's going to restart uh, your process. But uh, this comes at a cost. So if you're doing 10,000 requests a second, and the process keeps crashing, uh, there's an overhead to that. This code path is usually slower. And you'll probably be logging some information about the crash. So you're writing to disk now, and you're adding some IO work. So often, um, you're going to end up in the loop where you're just penalizing yourself even more. And